So today I will focus on three of the last, may, may we? Uh, right. On three of the last projects I, I finished in my, my office. But before that, I would really like to introduce myself because mm, especially in a school of architecture, um, it's important to show uh, not only your colleagues, also the students, uh, the way you uh, approach uh, architecture. Uh, so um, somehow in the first part of uh, this uh, lecture, um, I will try to um, point out some aspects that appear frequently in my architecture. Aspects that become somehow obsessive in my mind when thinking architecture, or in other words, the architecture that I believe in. This is my office, a very small office in the center of Madrid. It's only about 40 square meters where I mostly work alone. This is important to explain because uh, there are very different approaches to architecture. All of them are valid, but mine is uh, taking care about this small space where I uh, develop my projects. The studio has a window that I like to see as an eye framing or facing the city. A window that somehow is reflecting this life going on outside in my board. And this is actually, as a metaphor, what I try to make in my projects. Try to get these ideas from the people <coughs> abroad, put it on my papers and my models. This table could be also be explained with this drawing, a drawing of a table that supports my architecture with three legs. One is related to thinking, the other one is related to teaching, and the third is related to building. <clears throat> Just when I finished the School of Architecture in 2000, um, I got a scholarship to study in Scandinavia for two years. And I was immersed in these icy uh, countries. I would say that it's quite amazing that this project, by coincidence, coincidence absolutely by coincidence, you know, appeared today two times uh, here in this lecture, probably it means that it's a good project. Those who doesn't know about this project, they have to really learn about the Woodland Chapel fast plume because I was traveling around Scandinavia, but especially I was focused into architects. One of them was Gunnar Asplund and the Woodland Chapel. The other one was Sigurd Leverens. Actually, actually, also today Sigurd Leverens appeared two times. By the way, the one who knows a lot about Leverence is Gennaro Postiglioni, and not me. I learned a lot from Gennaro about uh, Leverence. But I was especially focused during these two years to understand and to study this project. It's the Woodland Cemetery, built together for about of 25 years uh, by Asplund and Leverence. That was in 2000. In 2008, I stopped again all my activity in my office and I went to Rome. This is one view from my studio in the Spanish Academy in Rome. I got the Rome Prize and I had the privilege to study um, Italian architecture for one and a half year with this map. This knowledge map which helped me to understand the Italian old architecture. Of course, I try to study also and to understand this fantastic modern architecture that you have. Malaparte's house, in this case, in Astronomy Day. I'm sure I will immerse, in this case, for example, in Sicily, in Ragusa, in an old quarry from the 16th century, which actually more than a quarry, it looks like a cathedral. It's important when you are thinking about architecture to tidy up all these ideas in some books. So I forced myself also to write about architecture. And these are some of the publications. Of course, they are double. You know, this is a kind of strange system that you have here in this university because it, it looks like I have been writing a lot, but it's only half of them. Well, the second leg that supports my activity is teaching. <coughs> 
let me see if it's run properly. I'm based in the School of Architecture in Madrid, where I'm associated professor. And this is um, one small video about the last um, uh, layout we had uh, last year. I'm not going to go through it because the um, mm, teaching system in Madrid is pretty similar to the one you have here. But I really like to focus on this one because I share my teaching time also, again, with the Scandinavian countries. In that case, as you can see in this picture, we park the drawing tables and we only work with models, in this case 1 to 50, 1 to 20, and 1 to 1, which gives us the possibility to um, teach the students to approach the architecture in a very different way because it's important to think architecture as you will be building it. <coughs> the tool that relates these three approaches to architecture, in my case, is do hand drawing. I really believe that hand drawing is the best tool of architecture. We are immersed in the digital world and I know that uh, mm, there are other possibilities, but I still believe that um, sketching is the best way to capture the sense of life. And I force myself. These are a lot of sketchbooks that I made during my um, Rome scholarship, but I will show you some examples of this drawing that I made during my trips. In this case, it's Villa Stenas from Guna Asplon, where I try to capture all these uh, small details of uh, uh, the house uh, putting together, or in Egypt, trying to also feel the massivity, the monumentality of an amazing architecture that was built more than 2,000 years ago, or again in Selinunte, enjoying and climbing these metropies and columns from Temple G. And of course, Using this uh, sketching also for developing my own architecture. This is uh, one mm, small cottage that I'm actually now beginning to build for me and for my, for my family not far away from, from Madrid. It's um, um, a cottage that even if it's very small, it will be like a tower trying to get different um, connections with the trees and with the horizon. Well, uh, during these last 15 years, I have been uh, immersed in very different approaches to architecture. This is um, quite a strange project because I was asked to build and to light uh, a forest that had become part of the city. And I decided to build huge lamps put in the edge of that forest to uh, light this area of the city. But at the same time, I really feel that architecture is also in the very small details. In this case, in um, uh, a small apartment, I decided to paint all uh, the walls in black to uh, make these beautiful paintings on them. Lightness is also something very important in my architecture, and it's always in my mind when thinking it, in this case, in a very old, uh, building, I was asked to remove it and, and to rebuild it, and I decided to build this light piece of staircase in the middle in contrast with the massivity and the monumentality of the existing architecture. Or again, in this uh, small project, this uh, a sailing school, uh, sailing school close to Gibraltar, I decided to make as light as possible a shelter before the building, allowing shadow to that space. But at the same time, gravity, heaviness, is also a very important part of my architecture. In this case, and this project is very related to Terrani's uh, Danteum's entrance, I was asked to develop um, the entrance of a, a park that um, has to uh, build the edge between a noisy street and the quiet uh, um, 
uh, square. Or again, here uh, I was asked for, for building a, um, a small square, and I decided to, to build the edges as strong, as heavy as possible, to um, free up the center of the square, allowing different activities. The horizontal uh, plane is uh, mm, an element that uh, is always uh, in my architecture, in the way these uh, elements relate to uh, nature and to the landscape in a very intense way. But also the vertical plane is something that is always in my, in my mind. That in that case, a huge vertical plane with one huge opening window um, uh, facing and framing the landscape. Also, I believe that architecture is a, a love story with Earth. In this case, I had the opportunity to build a huge mountain. Uh, on top of that mountain uh, was developed a square, uh, creating a um, difference of height between the, um, the road and the square. Also, in this case, uh, a square was dig out in the earth, framing the sky. Sky that was framing also in the entrance that I have seen, uh, if I've shown you before. And again, you know, you will see, you can see one of the beautiful drawings from Terrani from the Danteon with this cut, like a painting of the, of the, of the sky. Thresholds. These elements that separate two different spaces is also an important part of my architecture. And in all the projects, I try to develop these elements that give distance from the entrance to the centers of the different spaces. Threshold that has not to be a large scale uh, space, like in the picture before, it can be also a very small door that depending on the way it opens, it creates different character to that entrance. The horizon and the way we relate to the horizon is also mm, indeed always in my mind when thinking architecture, in that case, underlining these trees, maybe underlining or overlining it, or in this case also framing the view, the long view, to the Pyrenees in this park built in Zaragoza. Scale. How a scale can change the sense of architecture. This is something that Piranesi show us with these two capitals close to the people, these fantastic drawings from the 17th century. In the same sense that I try to enlarge the size of these letters to make the wall different somehow in the different scale or these lamps change radically you know the scale of the space because they are huge lamps one meter and 50 centimeters uh, wide giving another scale to the space and of course architecture has to be concerned about uh, existing architecture or existing building and when i was asked to enlarge a cemetery in this old uh, village, I just try to put a few elements, in this case a lamp, a tree, a door, some walls, close to the ex ex existing buildings, but without touching it. Or in this case, a 17th century uh, small church, where I just decide to build the entrance that you have seen before, and a skylight. Architecture especially modern architecture, needs to have the capability of uh, change the atmosphere uh, without uh, a lot of effort. In this case, with light shares, um, some curtains, in just a few minutes, um, um, an exhibition hall can become a lecture hall. And of course, in the same space, structure was something very important to, to develop. And I am not thinking about the way the structure supports the building. Of course, the structure has to support the building. I'm thinking about the way structure has the capability to transform 
but it's on the space. In this case, it was an uh, existing building where uh, I, I did decide to build this U concrete slab to uh, contain the earth at the other side of the, of the walls. And actually, this element gives the character to the, to the space. It not, it's not only supporting it, it's also giving the character to it. Or in this case, this cantilever also give the quality to this horizontal space. And of course, light is also always in the mind of an arch architecture, and especially in mind, is always, always from the beginning of the project. You see here one a beautiful Italian example of a Norwegian architect, Sverfen, and the way he uh, transform the Mediterranean light in a Nordic soft light. Somehow I try again just making a skylight in this 16th, 17th century chapel to transform the inner light in a very soft light. Or in this case, in the luxury hall, you know, the, the light likes to be as strong as this uh, paint. Texture, material, uh, Jurgen was mm, explaining us about the, the, the capability of, 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 of the material to transform the, the space. In this case, in this chapel, as you see, the pattern of the concrete transform uh, the, this uh, uh, room. Or in this cyclop cyclopean uh, walls, uh, uh, again, the, the mix of concrete and uh, huge pieces of uh, stone that I found in the, in the context. I mean, I, I didn't bring them. There was the opportunity to build was like this because the, 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 the stones was, was there. It gave me the possibility to, to make these huge uh, walls somehow in um, a very archaic way. But more than all these concepts, this idea, light, structure, whatever, architecture is especially to have fun. To have fun like this uh, child in a, a village without swimming pool, where I decide to build a phone time that can cool them down during the summer. And sometimes architects mm, don't expect what will happen in their buildings, in this case, um, an old capital from the 17th century that I decided that it would be me, maybe a, a bench, a, a child decide to, to transform in another thing. Or in this case, these sliding doors, again, think by an architect that it will help, you know, to remove the air of the, of the um, uh, sailing school. It was transformed by two childs in a racing track. The first uh, project I'd like to show you um, closer, closer today is this chemical laboratory building in the University of Alcala. I will go through this project, um, <coughs> do uh, different uh, items. The first has to be with the context, both programmatic and physical. Uh, it's important to explain that from the programmatic uh, point of view, the different faculties of the, um, of, of, of the university had very dangerous laboratories inside uh, their building. So I was asked to concentrate all these dangerous laboratories in one single building. From the physical point of view, the University of Alcala is mm, mm, nothing very beautiful because it was thought as an uh, American or British uh, campus, but actu actually they didn't succeed. It. So. Mm, the urban space has no interest at all. That's why, uh, from the very beginning, I decided to develop a very compact project, close in its facade, and open through courtyards to get air and uh, light. This is one of the first models I, I made. And uh, you, will s you can see here, you know, these uh, uh, facades close and, and the, the importance that this core just uh, took in the, in the project. And from the first collage that I showed to the, to the client, uh, 
that I had to explain because when you explain client that you are going to build a project without Windows, <laughs> it's something to explain. But they, they, uh, they understood that it was not the typical building because these uh, dangerous laboratories that they were in, it was very clear that um, do the, um, the facades, the project has to, to get this uh, character of a strong piece of architecture close to its surrounding. This is the plan, I said before, is close in its surrounding, open with uh, these gates I will show and explain uh, later. And this is the final result, as you see, a very strong uh, box, close and built in galvanized steel. Open do these uh, codgers. as you may see here in this picture. Codger that gives uh, air and light to the uh, inner space. It's an inner space that is um, mainly open, you will see uh, later on, because it's, it was important to have this uh, air inside the, the, the building. The project is divided in three bands. The middle band is like an uh, inner uh, corridor, allowing light trucks to enter, load, and unload the different uh, um, dangerous materials. In the north band uh, was decided to concentrate the services, toilets, control area, and this is the, the entrance to the service area, and from outside the entrance for the workers in the, in the building. And in, in the south uh, band, um, were developed these four elements with the laboratories and the storage uh, rooms. And in between then it was important to have different codgers um, mm, allowing uh, light and, uh, and wind uh, air inside. But <coughs> at the same time, the laboratories were not um, as usually. And uh, because of these elements that has to be developed there, they are very close to light, only with these two holes. But still, these secondary uh, uh, corridors get light from the, from the skylights and from the um, codgers. This is the south facade, where you can see the four entrance to the different codgers between the laboratories. And light become, again, as uh, I show you in the first part of this intervention, this lecture, very, very um, uh, important thing in this project. And with this sketch, maybe explain the project as a concavity open with air, partly uh, covered uh, by, by the roof. And this is the way the project was uh, mm, developed, uh, giving big openings to the, to the courtyard. But when I was just about to finish the project, I realized that it was very nice to fold this uh, mm, um, roof, as you can see here in this, in this picture, and that gives me the possibility to concentrate in the light on, on the slow part of the building, giving more shadow to the space, and especially uh, avoiding rain water inside the main corridor. Well, this project is built with very few uh, materials. I always try to build my projects in very few uh, uh, materials. You have seen, you will see uh, today. In that case, uh, structure, facade, and ceiling is built with galvanized uh, uh, steel, uh, floors with concrete uh, floors, and only the part that has to be uh, close were built with uh, cement uh, isolated panels. This is a picture under construction where you may see these isolated elements inside this skin of uh, galvanized steel. And I have to say that galvanized steel is a fantastic material, especially because it's cheap. I always try to build as cheap as possible. I think this is important. Even in the very cheap material, you can really find uh, the powerful, powerful of architecture, and galvanized steel is, is a cheap uh, uh, material. In this case, it was used in a huge size, five meters uh, uh, tall, two meters 
uh, Y screw directly to um, again galvanize uh, steel structure. It's amazing how even like it's concrete actually galvanized steel has different very different patterns and also it's quite amazing how this material change um, mm, with time this is one of the pictures that I, I made when when the, mm, they put this um, this uh, uh, panel this kind of shiny material what you will see here in in this uh, picture is um, amazing material because uh, the, the different season of the year, so the different hours of the day is a material that really attracts the light in, in a fantastic way. And especially the gates, the doors, were these elements that give the character to the building. You have seen before, there are two di very different uh, gates in this uh, project, the pedestrian gates, five meters tall and two meters wide. Something is getting wrong with this. <laughs> and um, these sliding big doors, five by five, for the trucks coming in. The first consequence of using these uh, gates is that, as you have seen in the first part of the project, is it also changed the scale of the building. The building looks, even though it has a strong character, the, the building looks smaller than actually uh, it is. And the second consequence that actually I really like a lot is uh, when, the, when the building is closed, it's an inner space related to light and to the cultures, but suddenly when you open one of these doors, you really get connection with the horizon. Second project I'd like to show you today is a park in the city of Zaragoza. It's called Valdefierros Park. This is the area that had to be developed. By the way, all the projects I, I am showing you, mostly all of them, are competitions. Um, it's a suburb in the, of the city of uh, Zaragoza. Uh, Maybe it's important to, to point out that uh, it was a, a canal in Peñal de Aragón, a river channel here in the south edge, which give um, a lot of opportunities to the, to the project. But what is really important to explain in this project is that this area had been 70 years ago a gravel uh, pit, where they take the gravel for building almost uh, half of the city a gravel pit or a gravel quarry, after uh, finishing to taking out all this gravel and having these huge holes in the earth, afterwards they fill them with damp. So I found a real problem in this project because the budget of the project, if I have to take all this damp to the damp place, it will have to take almost one third of the budget. The second point is that it was a difference of high of nine meters between the city level and the river's level. So, and this is probably the most important drawing of this project, I decide with this damp material to mix them with concrete and to have the opportunity of building different horizontal steps for the park, allowing me to use this material for building the project. That means less concrete. That means I don't have to bring that dump to the, uh, to the dump place. This is not something new. This is something that you Italians, 2,000 years ago, did in Testaccio. Testaccio is a mountain, Mont Testaccio. Hill Testaccio in Rome is a mountain built peeling up the old amphoras, actually coming from Spain, which makes me very happy, <laughs> <laughs> and concentrated in one part of the city for building a hill. So it was not my idea, it was your idea. So we began to work in this way, mixing 
the dam material with concrete. And that was the final result. And I didn't expect that. I didn't expect to have a pattern where you could see this uh, construction dump material, you know, connected with concrete. Actually, in a romantic way, I was thinking on this beautiful pattern from Leverance again, you know, in, <laughs> in San Marcus chart in, in Stockholm, or of course this fantastic shiny pattern of uh, Palios Siena's um, square or this, again, beautiful pattern in brick in Villa Adriana in Rome. So I had the problem. Try to resolve it in this way. But after two days working, these guys realized that they have to brush about five thousand square meters and they say to me you are crazy we go home <laughs> so I realized I had a big problem so during that days I didn't sleep too much of course I had a real problem you know uh, in one of my visits to the uh, working place I saw a huge machine making trench in the earth digging the earth up um, uh, for severs and drains. And I decided to use this machine in this way. <laughs> With this result. So somehow it's the same. It's using a machine that gives this beautiful pattern to the worlds where you still can see this different element that has been used from the dam side mixed with concrete and giving a strong character uh, as a material to the project. So the rest was easy. It was just to find a geometry connected to the, to the plot area, giving different steps with the help of some walls, as this is the final result. given very different possibilities, in this case three uh, steps, but in case of, of the connection between the river and the city, only two uh, steps and a huge wall, in this case one meter tall, and helping these uh, walls, uh, the project got the connections between the different levels with the help of ramps and staircase try to build them as thin as possible, um, confrontating this element with the huge uh, size of the cyclopean walls. But the, the element that really gives character to the project is this 400 meters uh, na uh, long wall, 9 meters uh, tall, this, this one, which separates the city from, from the, um, the river, that actually is also, again, relate to my time in uh, Rome as a scholarship of the Spanish Academy, in this case with Pesquiles Wall in Villa Adriana. An element that contains benches, uh, as you may see here, staircases, connecting the two different uh, uh, levels, as you may see here, I mean, because this wall is a one meter eighty wide, so it allows me to to give uh, space for the staircase. Has this size because it has no steel. Steel is the most expensive thing when you are building a concrete wall. So, do this using of the dam allow me also to make very wide uh, elements as cheap as possible. Well, more benches, more staircase. From the plane of the city, from the level of the city, was again very important to me how the, the project relates to the horizon. And in this case, avoiding handrails 
I decide to make this trench, giving this plane the same level as the city, and giving me the possibility of framing and underlining. The, this line was very important for, for me. This single line took me months to, to develop, but it was important to me how these trees should be framed in this project, and I did with this trench and these two levels in this way. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's quite interesting how the, the plane of the city is framing just the trees, which actually are nicer than the architecture that were in front of me. This is the Faculty of Cellular and Genetic Biology. In this case, I was asked to enlarge uh, an old city from the uh, 1940s that had been transformed a lot. Uh, it was quite interesting that in front of the building, this building, I found um, a beautiful park. This is the existing building with the main corridors, and I found a beautiful park. And this is the way I developed. I, 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 um, um, try to resolve as good as possible the existing uh, building. I built another level on top. Is this one? The southwest facade was the only element removed from the existing building, and I built a new polycarbonate facade that gives the possibility to connect the old building with the new one, which actually has the uh, boxes of the um, mm, seminars um, and um, mm, mm, what's the name in English? Uh, um, well, you will see, <laughs> it will come. The existing building, as I told you before, I tried to touch as less as possible, just uh, trying to make an effort to, again, uh, develop new uh, openings that uh, gives uh, a very soft shadow inside, and the uh, existing elements, the existing windows that has to be uh, closed, uh, I close directly again with these uh, galvanized steel chip panels. The door also was built, in this case, in gal galvanized steel, and in, in the inner space, it was very important to me try to resolve a project that uh, framed the, the sense of the old building because I found beautiful concrete existing uh, slab and I tried to make uh, the structure and the new part of the building as clean as possible to, um, to, to allow me to, to protect somehow in this space these existing elements. The third level, as in the project that I showed you before, is like a black box without openings in the facade. Also, it's, uh, of course, uh, influenced by the black box of the studio of uh, Leverance in, in Lund. And it's only open with uh, skylights, giving light to the mm, toilets, to the staircase, and to the main corridors. This is a very important element, is the new facade in the, south, um, in the south part of the existing building, building polycarbonate and connecting uh, with the help of bridges, the old building and the, the new one. Um, uh, giving space between the existing building and the new uh, one, uh, giving air and light inside the building. You can see here how it works, you know, giving air. And it was uh, somehow the first element that separated the existing building with the new uh, one. In the ground floor, um, I mm, built like uh, a carpet roll to the trees, you know, that connects the existing uh, park with the building. It was important to me, like, um, making uh, an element that contains all the activity related in front of the building, as you may see in this sketch, with this final result. 
from the first sketches of the project, it was this idea of, of trying to capture the, um, the park with the help of this, of this floor. As you may see, I, I, I was carefully trying to build architecture without frame windows, and in that case, the re re really the floor goes uh, to, the, the, to the park. And especially the new building is prob probably the, the most uh, powerful element in the, in the project. In this case, um, it's an element on four big concrete uh, walls with huge, two huge uh, concrete uh, beams. They are one meter 60 uh, high and uh, 65 centimeters wide. And on top of this is uh, this beam support the, um, the, the building with the, the, uh, the seminars and whatever. And this is the final result. An element that um, concerning the southwest light uh, has these um, cantilevers, these windows, or you may see here in this in this um, facade, you know, in this front picture. The produce can deliver eight meters in the in the um, in the edges, trying again to capture, you know, the element that is in front of the of the project. And from the seminars, still, it, it, it tries to to get not all only the, the trees from the park, also the light from the, the courtyards in this way. An element, uh, seminars that change radically, you know, from a, a huge transparency in both sides with the help of curtains like this, and that now looks like this, and it looks perfect <laughs> for me. Um, these boxes are like cavities, you know, open in the concrete. Of course, relate again with the woodland chapel and the way Asplund made like this cavity open in the in the um, in this chapel. I try to make this cavity open to the courtyards and framing the view with the help of these concrete slabs in this way open to the north light and due to the help of these narrow long windows uh, trying to uh, get the view of the trees but without getting the light from the southwest inside. This is one of the offices where you can see how important it was you know, to frame like a paint the trees in front of you. But at the, same si at the same time, from the other side, it gets this soft light inside the project and how everything is built in concrete, like a, a cavity. In the two edges, the, the boxes, the, uh, the, the part of the apartments are bigger, allowing long uh, windows to both sides. And uh, when they asked me to mm, put in the project uh, uh, new furniture, I decided that it was quite stupid, you know, because the old furniture were pretty okay and uh, it has, mm, had no sense. So, again, it looks perfect uh, for me, even though it's a new architecture with furniture from 20 years ago, because still, even though the different furniture and the way the people adapt their spaces, still, what is important is that the window is always in the same place and it's not never covered with curtains because this has this concrete slab and still it relays the character of the cavities inside the project. On top of the building, I made another seminar. In this case, the view was fabulous, so I opened all the window to the, to the um, to the garden, so I need to cantilever more than uh, in the boxes uh, this uh, concrete slab. And to finish, I may show you a three minutes um, video, which probably summarizes better than me this project.
Thank you very much.